ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا اله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا ما بعد Tonight, inshallah, we continue with Bab al-Nadr, or Kitab al-Nadr, the chapter of uh, swearing and oaths. We reach where the author, rahimahullah, said, فَإِنْ عُلِمَتْ الْنِيَّةِ رُجِعَ إِلَى سَبَبِ الْيَمِينِ وَمَا هَيَّجَهِ يعني, when someone makes an oath, Uh, someone swears and when he was confronted what you swore on because the niyyah is important what, what, what's, what's, yeah, and what the reason you swore is hmm? there's a reason you swore for a reason no one just wakes up and swears okay? there's something happened that made you swear and that swear is a result of something which means that swear huh, you made has and carries with it specifics so when it comes to fulfilling it we have to know the intention why you said it and what did you mean by it okay when someone swears to i swear i will not drink what is it why huh? what is it you don't want to drink what is it huh? i swear i will not enter your house Why? Huh? What do you mean by that? My house or where I live or wherever I am. So it's very important to know that. So when someone is asked, as he said, Someone is asked, why did you swear? He said, honestly, I don't know. What did you swear on? I don't know. Okay? Huh? We have In this instance, when he doesn't know what he wanted from his swearing, what his intention was, then we're going to go back to the, to the scenario and the situation when he made the swear. From there, we can deduce and we can conclude what he meant by his swear. To make it simple, you go visit someone. And you have an argument with him in his house, for example. So you swear, Wallahi, لا أدخل بيتك. Wallahi, I will not enter your house. Or, let's make it simple. Wallahi, I will not enter this house. Okay? You're upset. So when you're asked, what did you mean by not entering his house or that house? He tells you honestly, I don't know. So now we go back to the scenario or the situation when it happened. So obviously, he meant when he said he will not enter this house because he meant that swear as a result of a fight with the owner of the house. So we will conclude that he meant by his swear that he will not enter this house as long as this guy is the one owning this house. That's what it is. So if it happens that this owner sold his house or he was renting and he lived the house, he moved somewhere else. And this person who swore he will not enter this specific house, when he was asked about his intention, he said, I don't know. And because of the fight, we concluded that he's, or his intention was that he will not enter this house as long as this guy lives in it that he had a fight with. Then now the fact this guy has left or moved out or sold the house, and this person who made the swear comes into this house, then we say he did not break his swear. Okay? So his intention, which he didn't know, we look at the situation when it was said. 
So from this situation, we understand he said it because he's angry with the guy who lives in that house. So once that guy who lives in that house doesn't live in the house anymore, then his swearing that he will not enter that house is not valid anymore. So if he enters that house, he's fine. Lam yahnath. He did not break his, his promise. Okay? That is what they mean when they say, فَإِنْ عُدِمَتِ النِّيَّةِ رُجَعَ إِلَى سَبَبِ الْيَمِينِ وَمَا هَيَّجَ Okay? So now it's clear. فَإِنْ عُدِمَ ذَلِكَ حُمِلَتْ يَمِينُهُ عَلَى ظَاهِرِ اللَّهِ فَجِمَ الْوَضْ First, if the intention is not there, if he didn't know his intention, then we look at the reason that made him or led him to make, to swear. If that reason is not there, يعني we don't know. Okay? There's no reason. Okay? There's no specific reason. Okay? If we go back to the previous example, if someone swore, I will not enter, I swear by Allah, I'll never enter this house. Let's say 2352 Southwest, 80 Avenue, for example. Okay? I will swear, but I'll never enter this house. So when he's asked about the intention, he said, my intention is not to enter this specific house. Something happens every time I walk in this. Obviously, the reason is the house now. So it doesn't matter who the owner is. Anytime he walks into that house, he had broken his story. Okay? Just to clear. But when he swore after the fight, he was referring to the person more than the house. So the reason that led him to swear was the person who lives in the house, not the house. So once that person is out of the house and moves out or leaves the house and he sells it up, then the swearing is yes, he can enter the house. Then Rudimadarik, there is no reason. He just swore. He doesn't know the intention. What, what, he's, what he meant by his swear. Okay? He's just angry with himself. Whatever it is. Okay? But when we ask and we would try to search, okay, what is the reason that made him swear? We could not find anything. When we ask him about his intention, he doesn't know. So what happens in this situation? In this situation, then we're going to take his swear literally. Okay? We're going to take his swear literally. And whatever the swear means, we're going to take it literal meaning. And that is what he needs to either stay away from or fulfill based on his swear. Okay? Yeah. When we talk about any expression you make, any expression can mean one of three things. Yeah, you can learn its meaning through one of three ways. Either it has a shari'i meaning, sharia, and the sharia gives a meaning to that word. That also word can mean something in the language, which is different than what the sharia refers to. Let me give you some example. And third, al-uf. It can mean something in the dictionary, but really the way people use it, it's something else. Okay? So in this situation, the foremost and the most important, or the first uh, meaning we're going to take when someone doesn't know what his intention was, and we cannot figure out when he made this way, why he made it. So we're only stuck with the expression he made. The very first thing we take the expression to mean is through the Sharia. Through what it, if it has a meaning in Islam, okay, as a religion, for example. Someone swore that he will pray. Okay? I swear by Allah, I'm going to pray for five minutes. Nothing. Okay? What's your intention? I don't remember. Why did you make that swear? I'm not sure. When? I don't remember. Then we're going to take Salah. Because Salah, we're going to take the expression itself. 
and get the meaning of it. Either معنى شرعي أو معنى عرفي أو معنى حقيقي. Either the linguistic meaning, the شريعة meaning, or the عرف, the customs meaning. If someone said, I will make salah for five minutes, the word salah in Arabic means, if we take, if we look in a dictionary, Arabic dictionary, the word salah means dua. Dua. Like salah in Sharia means refers to when we say salah, right away you think of sujood and rukuwa and okay. And we said the very first meaning we refer to is the Sharia meaning. So this person cannot sit five minutes and make dua. We tell him you are obligated to pray. Pray. يعني قيام تكبيرة الإحرام ركوع سجود فاتحة فوضى. So we shifted from the linguistic meaning to the شريعة meaning when the intention was missing or not figured out and when the cause was not identified. فإن كان له عرف شرعي حملت يمينه عليه. Okay, that is what. So if the expression has a shari'i meaning, meaning in the sharia, then that is the first meaning we're going to use. We're going to go with it. Okay? وَلَوْ حَلَفَ لَا يَبِيعَ فَبَاعَ بَيْعًا فَاسِدًا لَمْ يَحْنَثْ Okay? Someone, and again, someone swore he will not sell. He will not sell. And he went and he sold something فاسد يعني البيع فاسد ايه البيع فاسد يعني the sale شرعي in Islam is forbidden such transaction is forbidden so such transaction because it's forbidden as in and also invalid it will not count as sale because when we say شريع sale it must meet certain conditions to be valid, to be considered real sale. Other than that, it's not sale. It's facet, invalid. So someone swears, I will, I swear by Allah, I will not sell. Yes. And he goes, he sells liquor. He did not break his promise. So, you understand? He swears he will not sell, period. I will not sell. He didn't say what, but he swore he will not sell, period. Yeah, let's say he works in a store, huh? He got into an argument or he hates his life, so he said, Wallahi, from tomorrow I will not sell. <laughs> so he goes and he sells like, his swearing still standing. He did not break it. Because selling liquor is haram and facet and invalid and it's not considered sale. Now, قالوا إنما البيع مثل الربا حرام الله البيع حرام الربا They claim that selling and buying is exactly like dealing with usury. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemning them for thinking that way even though they thought or they considered it usury as business, Allah says it's not business, even though it's business for most people. Allah is condemning them because they said, huh? selling and buying or business is like riba. Yani riba is business too, it's just another kind of business. So Allah is condemning them for saying that. So obviously we can see any book of transactions, you will find usury in it interest as they call it. Any business school you go to, they're going to talk about interest and they consider a transaction. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't, for the Muslims isn't. Even in the books of fiqh, you will find when they talk about transactions, they talk about riba. But they don't talk about riba as a valid transaction. They talk about it as invalid transactions and it's forbidden and should be avoided. So if something is considered sale to the people, because we still, you see, we still in the same idea that we first, the very first meaning we're going to refer to 
is the shari'i meaning. So selling alcohol isn't sin. Huh? Isn't it a valid sale? So it's not considered sale, period. So if someone swears not to sell, and he stops there, then he goes and he sells liquor, or he sells a lottery ticket, or he sells cigarettes, huh? or he sells meite, huh? dead animal, dead meat, or uh, he sells body organs, as some people do. We say he did not break his swear because he really did not sell valid things. إلا أن يضيفه إلى ما لا يصح بينه. Except if he says I swear by Allah I will not sell liquor. Or I swear by Allah I will not sell and here he uses الحب أو الخمر. إلا يضيفه إلى ما لا يصح بيعه كالحر والخمر فتتناول يمينه صورة البيع فيها. Unless he says, I swear by Allah I will not sell liquor or I will not sell a free man. Because the way is you go and you capture a man, huh? You throw a man with a weapon and then you chain him, you chain his feet to his his arms to his feet and then you say this is my slave. This is how this is not how slavery is. Islam came and opened the doors to free slaves. Islam came in a time where slaves exist. It was a major, major in them, major affair. So Islam came with 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 plans different. In Jahiliyyah, there were many ways to make someone a slave. But there is only one way to get someone out of slavery. And that is if his owner his master tell him you're free. But many, many, many other ways that, yeah, I need an example. Someone owes someone else money. And it's time to pay. Huh? So I borrowed money from you, and it's time for me to pay. You come to me and you say, time to pay. So I say, I don't have. You say, I'm not letting go. <clears throat> okay, how much you how much I owe you? You owe me thousand da. Okay. How much a slave in the market? Such and such age, such and such strength, such and such thousand dollar. There's my son. So I give you my son and you I turn him into a slave so I can pay off my debt. Slavery the way those who found this country. They went to indigenous people, huh? innocent people, living in peace in their own land, and they kidnapped it, and they shipped them, and they enslaved them. That is not how slavery. And then, yet they come to attack Islam that talks about slavery. Prophet yani they used to see the Sahaba. Huh? He will walk with his slave, he's dressed the same way as his slave. He'll sit to eat and his slave will, have, will eat with him. Why? Because their messenger وسلم, told them to do that, to take care of their slave. So Islam came and closed all the ways to make someone a slave and left one way and opened too many ways to free a slave rather than one way. So imagine coming in is one tunnel and getting out is many, many. That when it will lead to a time where it will come to have no slaves and that is what's happening today. Regardless of what some tribes here and there huh? in Africa claim they are slaves, that's not true. But the point is, the only way that the person can be turned into slave in Islam is war. War. You come to fight us, if we capture you, we're turning you into a slave. When you have got to choose, either we turn you into a slave or we kill you. What are we going to do with you? Feed you? Get you fat? So I don't think someone will choose 
ها تو بین ناو یعنی دس دندر تریز اند اول دن دس دیفرنت ایشو وی ار تلینگ ابات شریا بیکاز یو ویل فایند سم پیپل کامین ها هو هو تو اسلام اند دی تل یو ناو دیر از جنیوا ها تریری اند پیس اند دس اند دن ان اکسچینج اف پریزنرز Would I rather be in a prison or be a slave? Hmm? Be in prison, tortured, and and, huh? and uh, waterboarding, huh? and uh, come on. So it's very important to understand this. Has. That's why they bring it up, and that's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when He talks about some kafarat and expiations of some sins, He said, "Free a slave if you find. If you don't find." The slavery there was so widespread. Slavery was so widespread. Actually, if you look in the Islamic books, uh, you find such and such mawla, such and such. Ulama were slaves. Ulama. Big ulama. So it's very important to understand that. Not to yani, uh, stay away from it. But the point is, If someone swears to sell liquor and he goes and he sells liquor halal, then he has broken his promise. Okay? If he said, I will, I swear not to sell, and then he goes sell something halal, then he did not break his promise because selling something halal is not considered sharri sale. But if he specific, specifically mentioned, I swear I will not sell liquor, and he goes and he sells liquor, Okay, then he has committed against what he had sworn. وَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ عُرْفٌ شَرْعِي وَكَانَ لَهُ عُرْفٌ فِي الْعَادَةِ If there is no meaning in the Sharia, it's not يعني a word. Someone makes a word, but in the Sharia, there is no significance to it. There are no حكام attached to this word. Then now we go to the عرف to the customs. What people. What people use this word to mean? Because if you look in certain cultures, huh? Yeah, and for example, uh, in Egypt, if you say, if you tell a woman, is herizobi or gozik, is heri, meaning what? Huh? Go make magic with your husband so he can love you more. And go to a cannon or to a liar, huh? and let him make some, some uh, to a witch, huh? let him make uh, some, what they call, some magic, huh? some spells. In the Gulf countries, Isheri means, huh? يعني, be playful with it. And what happened is uh, in Hajj, usually the people go, the ulama will be sitting around, and people go ask him. So what happened one time, Shaykh ibn Uthaymin, rahimahullah, I think, people were asking him, so this Egyptian woman came to him, and she said, I have problems with my husband, and this and that. So he told her, it's heavy. It's heavy. For the Egyptian, it's heavy means, Make a spell. I'll go to a magician, let him do some magic so he loves it. For Ben Uthameen, who's from the goal, he means, Sheri, yani, be playful, be nice to him, take care of him. Huh? <laughs> so she answered, Rabbi Yashir, Sihar Haram. Sihar is Haram. How can you give me a little to make it? You understand? So when someone swears, we have, and there is no specific meaning in the Shahar, then we have to. Huh? Of course, it's sihr, yani. yeah. has meaning in the sharia, but I gave you example to make you understand it. Then we will take it to the earth, to the customs. And the custom is different from one place to another. So there is a word used in, in America, in, in the Muslim, amongst the Muslims in America. Huh? Means one thing, if you would translate it into Arabic and then ask a mufti who's doesn't live in America, and who doesn't know English, or even in America and he doesn't know English, it's completely going to be confused. You understand? So when there is no specific meaning in the Sharia, then we downgrade or we move to that customs meaning. Okay? 
وإن لم يكن له عرف شرعي وكان له عرف في العادة كالراوية والضعينة الراوية يعني he gives you two examples I give you the example of السحر but here he gives you examples different examples but not related to the شريعة الراوية usually like water found it's called considered راوية مزالية or any source of water when people drink from it's called راوية the quencher but also راوية really refers to the البعير the animal that is used to carry water from one place to another so in one place a rawiya would mean and mazada would mean that the, the container that has water for people to drink from but in the language it means the animal himar or 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 thor or you know so we're going to say what is the custom when they say rawiya or mazada what they mean they mean uh, water bottle so we're going to go with water bottle we're not going to go with the ba'ir in the dictionary it means ba'ir in the custom it means water bottle or source of water to, 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 to drink from you understand? al-da'ina, the same thing, al-da'ina in culture, in the customs means woman but actually al-da'ina is the camel uh, that is carrying الهودج، you know الهودج is like a small tent on top of it where women used to sit. now when they travel women will sit in a small tent that is established on the back of the of the camel. they'll ask me how they get it to stay there. but that's how it is. so ضعينة in the language means the camel that carries that thing. but in العرف it refers to a woman. okay. so someone swears. I swear I will not look at the Ba'ina. So is it, you're not going to look at women, or you're not going to look at camels, who's carrying women? You understand? In this situation, we're going to go with the customs. When people say Ba'ina, they refer to women. So we're going to go with women. Clear? Yeah. But in the Sharia, these words are mentioned in the Sharia. Huh? I think the Prophet mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ drank water from uh, from the Mazada, from a Jewish woman, huh? from a Jewish woman. And the Dha'ina, the Prophet ﷺ said, the Dha'ina, referring to women that will travel from Yemen to the Iraq, لا تخشى بالطريق إلا الله. That a woman will travel from place to a place, will not be afraid of anything but Allah and the wolf. So, it's mentioned in the Sharia, but it doesn't carry any hukm. That's why we're going to go to the customs. قال حملت يمينه عليه يعني we go with the customs. قال أنه لو حلف ما يركب دابته Someone swore that will not ride his vehicle. Now when, when Ibn Qudama years ago said refers to the vehicle, the dabba, he refers to camel and horse and donkey and mule and all right today when someone says Wallahi la arkabu dabbati I will not ride my vehicle for two days we don't say it's okay ride your car it's okay but don't ride your camel or your donkey he doesn't have a camel so today when we say vehicle in customs we refer to to the car Someone who lives in the desert and says, I will not ride my vehicle by Allah. He refers to can. You understand? Okay. So we should not, someone swears, ah, then, ah, you see, there, I, I read the explanation written by someone, ah, 15, uh, six, seven hundred years ago, and he's saying, that was camel or donkey or mule. He didn't mention cars. So that means I still can't ride my Hindana. They didn't have cars then. You understand? And even they're considered Sayyara. They can say Sayyara. Hmm? Wajahat Sayyara to Arsulu wa ridam fa adla dalu. Sayyara. But the point is what the customs refer to when they use a certain expression. Wa in halafa la yashimmu al-rayhan fa yameenuhu ala al-farisi. 
Someone swore, another example, someone swore that he will not smell a rayhan, rayhan, some kind of roses. فَيَمِينُهُ عَلَى الْفَارِسِي يعني, يعني يمينه على الريحان الفارسي. Now these are ريحان, these roses, different types. But when people say ريحان, automatically you have to think of ريحان الفارسي, the Persian ريحان. Huh? So someone said, I will not smell a ريحان. Immediately we're going to take, when the custom of people is, if someone says ريحان, he referring to ريحان الفارسي, the Persian. But there are many other types. But if he live, leaves it like that, without specifying, then we're going to take it with the customs. When people say Rayhan, which type they're referring to? The Persian. So we stick with the Persian. Clear? Let me think of example that we use here. Someone can help me. We say something. And, uh, think. I don't know. Right now I can أو قال لا يأكل شواء. Or if someone swore he will not eat شواء. شواء when someone says شواء means ها باربيكيو باربيكيو. Okay. But it can mean many different things. So we're gonna hold him to شواء. وإن حلف لا يضع مرأة حنث بجماعه. Someone swore will not use the word يضع. Allah ilan ata'a imra. So if he, now this yata can mean many things. Can mean many things. But shara'an and urfan, it means intercourse. Okay? So someone said, I swear I, by Allah I will not ata'a a woman. So when he slept to this one, we tell him you broke your promise. And he kafar. He said no. And when I said Ata, I did it, huh? Of course, if he meant something else, it's something else. But he, we asked him, what did you mean? He said, honestly, I don't remember. So we're gonna take it to what it's the major meaning, which is to intercourse. Okay? Yani yinka. Inkah means to do marriage contract or to have intercourse. So someone said, Wallahi la ankahu imra. We tell him. So it can mean either Wallahi I will not marry a moon or it can mean Wallahi I will not sleep with anyone. So this person, we come to him and we say, What did you mean by that? He said, uh, I meant I will not sleep with him. Then I will not sleep. He should not sleep. If he sleeps, then he breaks his bond. But if he said, I don't know, I don't remember why he said it, then we're going to go, what the nikah means in the shara? Usually, nikah in the book of Allah means marriage. Okay? وَلَا تَنْكِحُوا مَا نَكَحَ آدَمَ also could mean intercourse, but that is how the whole situation. قال وإن حلف لا يطع امرأة حنث بجماع وإن حلف لا يطع دارا حنث بدخولها كيف مكان. Yes, يطع يعني من الوقت. Stephen. So يطع means if someone said Allah, I will not أطع امرأة. You don't. No one says I will swear I will not step on a woman. Because yata also means to step on or to step in. But when you use the verb with a woman, meaning to sleep with her. <coughs> but when you use the verb with the house, it means to come in, to enter. So someone said, Wallahi la ata a woman, mean immediately. If he sleeps with a woman, then he broke the Ali kafar. If he says, Wallahi la ata a house, if he enters that specific house he swore on, huh? anyway he enters, huh? whether he walked in with his hand on his hand or crawling, because he might say, Wata ya'ani with your feet. Huh? He entered the house, then he broke his promise. 
قال وإن حلف لا يأكل لحما ولا رأسا ولا بيضا فيمينه على كل لحم ورأس كل حيوان وبيض. Someone swore I will not eat meat, I will not eat heads, I will not eat eggs. But when I say heads, I'm not referring to human heads. Yeah? Okay. They are not zombies. But they usually they eat some cultures, they eat the head. Yeah? They cook it. The Arabi? Turkey? You guys cook the head of the goat? Sure, sometimes. <laughs> All the time. Okay? They eat the brain. That's why we're so intelligent. <laughs> huh? Some people eat the eyes. I don't People eat the tongue. You know? So they eat anything. So someone swore, I will not eat a head, I will not eat an egg, or a eggs, or I will not eat meat. So then he's not allowed to eat any meat, he will not allow to eat any head of any animals, and any eggs. Okay? And if he does eat, he broke his, his promise. But if he said, well, I, I don't eat uh, chicken meat, then it's chicken meat. And for your news, chicken is meat. قال والأدم كل ما جرت العادة بأكل الخبز به من مائع وجامد. Okay. Uh, someone swore he will not eat the udum. The udum, any food that you need bread to eat. Any food that you, you use bread to eat it with. Hmm? Okay? So, meat, usually people eat bread, you eat meat with bread. So that's what's served. And that based on the culture. Okay? In America, I don't think they do. Uh, they do. Burger. Alright. So, usually anything uh, eaten with bread, you need the bread to eat it. It's considered. Udum. So if someone swears I will not eat the Udum, Wallahi I will not, then that applies to everything. So he said, Huwa ma jarat al-''adah to be akil al-khubz bi, wal-bayd, wal-milh, wal-jubnu, wal-zaytun. All these things, cheese, olives, salt, eggs. Yeah, with bread. So that all will fall under idam or al-udum. <coughs> قال وإن حلف لا يسكن دارا دارا تناول كل ما يسمى سكنا. So لا تضيق على نفسك. Don't make it so tight. Allah make something easy for you. Don't make it hard on yourself and then come for fatwa. Alright? Someone swears, I, by Allah, I will have his fighting about in his house. Let's say he lives in his home, yeah, in, his, in his house with his wife. At the house they bought it. And it happened that his wife got some money, so she's the one who put the down payment. She gave him the money for the down payment. My advice, don't ever do that. If you can't come up with the down payment yourself, don't take from it. So, he's in a fight with his wife, she doesn't leave. Get out, this is my house. So he's so angry, so offended, he said, Wallahi, I will not live in a house. In a house, not in this house, in a house. تَنَاوَلَ كُلُّ مَا يُسَمَّ عَسُكُ Then that will apply to anything considered house. فَإِنْ كَانَ سَاكِلًا بِهَا فَأَقَامَ بَعْدَ مَا أَمْكَنَهُ الْخُرُوجُ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّهُ يَحْلِ So if he swore, he will I swear I will not live in a house. Then he said, she apologized, she did this and that. So he said, okay. So if he stayed in that house, he broke his promise. If he left that house and went to stay with his parents, he broke his promise because his parents live in a house. 
He went to stay with his friend. That's a house. Or where should he go? Hotel. Okay. So if someone makes that swear, if he stays in that place, then he had broken his promise. وَإِنْ أَقَامَ لِنَقْلِقِ هِمَاشِ أَوْ كَانَ لَيْنًا فَأَقَامَ حَتَّى يُسْبِحَ أَوْ خَابَ عَلَى نَفْسِي فَأَقَامَ حَتَّى يَأْمَنْ لَمْ يَحْفَ However, in the past, they didn't have electricity. So they're saying, if someone made this such swear, but then he started thinking, if I'm going to move out and I'm going to take my stuff, it's dangerous. It's night, it's late, there are yeah, people outside, thieves and robbers. And so he said, I'll wait until the morning. In the past, that's what the Bidana said. He did not break his promise. Or there, he could not find someone to carry his, huh, his furniture, whatever he did. That's not. But in this time, that's not. Different. So different times, different fetal. So, however, if leaving the house at that moment will pose any threat on him, then he can stay until he's safe. Then he leaves, and he did not break his promise. But if he stays without a legit reason to stay, then he had broken his promise, and he's required to feed. Pick up phone. Bye. قال المؤلف باب كفارة اليمين. Now we talked about كفارة. So now we talked about the nudu. We talked about the ayman. And we said who doesn't do it and break his nether or break his promise. Ali kafar. And some nudu we said he should go with the kafar. So what is the kafar? يا عباد الله. قال وكفارة هذا طعام عشرة مساكين. The kafara of al yamin the last two or three lectures, every time you heard kafara, now I will tell you what I meant. Okay. Every time we read the word kafara, now the author Ahmad will tell you what it means. Okay? Because I had that question every time for the last two lectures or three lectures. After the Qala wa kafara tuha ibtaam ashwati masaki. Kafara is to feed ten people. Okay? The expiation for a broken nether or a broken swear or oath. Feeding ten people. Based on, of course we're going to mention the other options, but based on قوله تعالى لا يواخذكم الله باللغو في أيمانكم ولكن يواخذكم بما عقدتم الأيمان فكفارته إطعام عشرة مساكين فإطعام إطعام عشرة مساكين من أوسط ما تطعمون أهليكم أو كسوتهم أو تحرير رقبة فمن لم يجد فصيام ثلاثة أيام ذلك كفارة أيمانكم إذا حلفتم واحفظوا أيمانكم. This ayah is the عمدة في الكفارة. كفارة اليمين this ayah is the عمدة. This ayah is the basis. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the very first option he gives for those who cannot go salam rahmatullah. Kafara is to feed the people. Allah starts, you make a sway, you make an oath, and you cannot continue, you cannot proceed, then your kafara I'm gonna give you what the solution. كفارة الله سبحانه وتعالى سيس إطعام عشرة مساكين في تنفيذ من أوسط ما تطعمون أهلكم وصلوا كبار الدم قال وهو مخير بين تقديم الكفارة على الحد أو تأخيرها عنه When we talk about giving the kafara there are certain مسائل and situation comes up Yeah If you look at the ayah, it gives you the options. The very first three options, it's optional. You pick and choose. Then when you cannot choose any of the three, when you fail to do any of the three, then you move to the next option. 
So you actually got two options. The first option with three different options. So either you feed 10 people, you clothe 10 people, or you free a slave. Four. 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 Okay. You cannot do any of those three. And in other words, if you can't feed, you clothe. If you can't clothe, you free a slave. If you can't free a slave, you clothe. If you can't clothe, you feed. If you can't feed, free a slave. Right? If you cannot clothe or feed or free a slave, then the next option is fast three days. Okay? So it's not either feed, clothe, or free, or fast. Because most people have this misunderstanding that uh, I broke my promise, yeah, I need to fast three days. No, no, no. Hold on. Okay? Clear? So those are the three options we have to focus on. Once we fail with those three, no one can feed. He doesn't have money to feed. He doesn't have money to clothe. And obviously, he can't find a slave to free. Then he moves to the next option. Okay? Fine. Now, if there is said. So someone said, I'm going to feed. Or clothe. Or free. Because that's his first option. And he has the means to do that. He has the means to feed 10 people or free a slave or whatever. So I said, how does that make a feed? He said, I'll feed tomorrow. Overnight, he went bankrupt. Or overnight, someone robbed all his wealth. So next day, he can't feed. He can't clothe. He can't free a slave. He does not move to the next option. We don't say now, you fast. Because when he broke that promise, or he decided to break that promise, he was capable to go with the first option. You do not go from first option to the second option until your means do not allow you. But when he decided to break his promise, because we will talk about, is the kafara do? When you intend to break the promise, when you make up your mind, or when you break it. Okay? But once he decided to do that, he was capable of going with the first option. Things happened before he took action and feed the ten people. Now he cannot afford it. We say, you, it's fidimmatic, you're still obligated to go with the first option. You don't have to do it now, but once you can manage to feed 10 people, then you have to feed 10 people, and fasting will not be, will not be accepted from you. Okay? What was this is, this is dead. This is in between him and Allah. He's still responsible, and he will be asked about it. Okay? But it's day between him and Allah. But the point is, hmm, the point is, that is the case. Yeah, if someone said, uh, I feel like I'm dying, so let me fast. Hmm. That when you decided to break the promise, or when you did break the, the swear, or another, you were capable of feeling. So that is the hukum that will run over you, even if you become poor. The second option is only given to that who cannot afford the first option at the time of breaking the swear or at the time of deciding to break it. Okay. But if, if the opposite, someone poor cannot feed, cannot free, and cannot clothe. So obviously his option is to fast. So he started fasting the first day. He's walking the street, fasting, tired, kicking with his feet. He kicks the magic lamp. Fan was just sad. You rub it? I'm just joking. He, <laughs> he gets into a business, he makes money. 
So I said, no, you know what? I think I have to go back and feed. No. When it became obligated on him to fulfill the kafara, can I So his only option was to fast. So now he started fasting, or he's obligated to fast, and becomes rich. We don't tell him now you have to go and feed. Or he become he's capable now to feed. Okay? So the hikmah, the hukum, is based on the time when it becomes obligatory. Clear? قال وهو مخير بين تقديم الكفارة على الحنث أو تأخيرها عن he that is saying no قدام رحمه الله the علماء had different opinions regarding that but he said that he has the option to pay the كفارة either at the time when he decided to break the promise his oath or once he broke. Yeah. Let's see what Karim wants. We will answer your question. <laughs> Someone swore, Wallahi. I will, uh, I will not slaughter a goat. It's an example. That is this. Let's say he works in a farm, right? Say he works with Munir in a farm. Munir is a tough boss. This guy is the one who slaughters for Munir. So Munir gave him a hard time. Munir having a bad day. He gave him a hard time. So the guy said, I swear I will not slaughter for you. Hmm. Then they cool down. Huh? They made up. Cooking some couscous. <laughs> so the guy changes. Has, I will continue working. <coughs> Once he ate the couscous, he said, you know what, this guy convinced me to work again with him. House, and I'm going to continue slaughtering for him. So now this is the time when he decided to break the oath. Tomorrow he comes to work, he goes the first goat he slaughters, he broke his oath. So they said he got the option to give the kafara. Either once after he ate the couscous, or the next day when he slaughtered. So either when he decides to break the oath or when he breaks. Some of them don't have different opinion. Obviously, the major other opinion is the kafara is incumbent on the person. Once he does the action or the violation, because kafara is usually a violation, once the violation takes place, then he gives the kafara. You understand? But this opinion, huh? Based on the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَنْ حَلَفَ عَلَى يَمِينٍ فَرَعَ غَيْرَهَا خَيْرًا مِنْهَا Now, the Prophet sallallahu said, whoever makes a swear to do something or not to do something, and then he finds out that another swear or another thing is better than. Okay? He swore to do something and then he realized, you know what? I can't do this. Huh? Let's say he swore to go visit his sister in some country. But then he, he said, I would rather go visit my parents. That's better, obviously, to visit your parents rather than your sister. And they both have rights. So the prompt, as I said, whoever makes a swear, and then he finds out something better. Huh? In one narration, Bukhari and Muslim, in one narration, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Okay. And in another narration he said, So in one narration he said, 
then he should expiate, give the kafara, and then do the other option. Because once he does the once he does the other option, he had broken the first. And in another narration, let him go with the other option, which is the better option, and give his kafara. So you can see in both different narrations, the Prophet exchange them, which is indication that you can go this way, give kafara before you break, or give kafara once you once you break. Clear? Now when we talk about the Clear? Sure. When we talk about the clear. <laughs> when we talk about the how much? Hmm? How much should we feed? Just to make it very simple. The ulama have many opinions. Some said sign of door. Some said mud. Some said half sign. Some said this. Some said that. Malikiya, and this is the opinion of Sheikh Islam Taymi, they said, you feed based on what people feed. Don't tell me sign and mud and kilo and three kilos and six pounds and this and that. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, feeding ten poor people. That means feed them what people are accustomed to eat. Maybe a mud or a sign it's too much for what people usually eat. And maybe it's too little for what you people usually eat. They want to eat them to fill them. You want them, when they eat, they feel that they had a meal. Huh? So you don't come and bring them huh? some haptain uh, or talat zatun and tell them, here's haptain, haptain, haptain. Two olives, two olives, two olives. I fit ten people. Nah. That's not what you feed your family. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Min The average what you accept to feed your family is what you feed these people. That's what it is. So if you feed your family uh, every day, uh, farooj, uh, and land legs, you don't go feed kushari to the poor. You understand? If you feed your family, barbecue every day, or meat every day. You don't go feed other people rice and say this is kaffa. Huh? But if you feed people, your family uh, rice, 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 you don't, know, you don't have to feed people meat. You understand? What you, what you accept for your family, you accept for them. You feed the poor. That's what it is. And that is just to get out of all the confusion. قال شيخ الإسلام لتين إن المنقول عن أكثر الصحابة والتابعين هو هذا القول هو أن الإطعام مقدر بالعرف قال وهو الصواب الذي يدل عليه الكتاب والسنة والاعتبار وهو قياس مذهب أحمد وأصول وذلك لأن الشارع لم يقدر مقدار ما يطعم والأصل فيما لم يقدره الشارع فإنه يرجع فيه, يرجع فيه إلى العرف So he's saying Allah سبحانه وتعالى says في 10 people but did not tell us how much the Prophet didn't tell us how much. Khalas, we're going to go with the culture, with the customs. Customs. Until you invite someone to, what do you feed him? That's what you feed. Right? You feed your family, what do you feed your family? That's what you feed. That is what it is. And that to be said. Now, when we talk about kafarat and feeding and people, we, in the Sharia, there are three different rules, or different situations. Some the Sharia indicated, some didn't indicate. So the first thing, ما قدر فيه ما يطعم ومن يطعم. There are situations that the Sharia, when he talked about kafara, he told you who to feed and what to feed. In the Hadith of Ka'ab ibn Ajur, the Prophet وسلم in the Makim and he in the Haram and he needed to shave his head because he couldn't keep his hair. He couldn't. So the Prophet told him, أطعم ستة مساكين لكل مسكين نصف صان or نصف صان. So here the Prophet told him whom to feed 
and what, how much to feed. So he told him, feed six poor people, and each poor person give him half a sack. Yeah, a wheat. That's a wheat they used to eat. Okay. Some situations, ما قدر فيه ما يطعم دون من يطعم. In the cat of the the cat of the we know, slime. But we don't know who to give it. Okay. Of course, we give it. يعني الرأي الواجه to the poor and مساكين فقراء والمساكين. Huh? But it's not mentioned specifically who to give it. To. All right. But it's mentioned exactly how much to give. So the first situation, both were mentioned. The second. The amount mentioned, the people who receive it aren't mentioned, the recipients. The third situation, the recipients are mentioned, but the amount isn't. And that is what we have in Kafarat. Kafarat al yameen We have in Kafarat uh, al jima fi Nahar al-Ramadan. Okay? Kafarat al diha Feed this amount of people. Feed 10 people and Feed 60 people in the jima'ah, kafarat al jima'ah fi nahar Ramadan, but they didn't say who to feed. Huh? That's why the man said, no, nah, I deserve it, so the problem of feed, you feed. So the point is, the kafara of al yameen falls into this category. The sharia or shari'ah tells us to feed 10 people, but it didn't tell us how much. Okay. So that is, so we go to al to the custom. When we don't, when the Sharia did not tell us how much, we go to the to the custom. <coughs> Ten people has to be Muslims. Muslim. قال ويجزئ في الكسوة ما تجوز الصلاة فيه للرجل ثوبا وللمرأة درع وخيمة أو درع وخيمة. When he talked about clothing, he said. The clothing that you should give to ten people, you should clothe them clothes enough for them to be able to pray with. So for a man, you give him a thub. Huh? For a woman, whatever she covers uh, her head with. And uh, uh, usually it's what's worn under qamis. But the point is, or focal qamis. But the point is, when you give, when you clothe, you have to clothe them in a way. If they were naked, whatever you give them, they can put it on and pray with them. No daddy. Again, we go to What do you usually buy for your kid? You, you give to the poor. What do you wear? Huh? You give to the poor. That's what it is. قال ويجزئه أن يطعم خمسة مساكين ويكسو خمسة. He can, the one who wants to give the the kafara, can feed ten and clothe ten. Make the sum. Can feed get feed five and clothe five. Make the sum ten. طيب can he feed Five, and after they finish eating, he takes them to Marshall and buy them clothes. It's still ten. Nah, it's fine. I'm sick. Those are fine. The same five he fit and the same five he clothed. That's fine. The ayah says ten. So we stick to ten different people. The ten Ashura Tarwah. ولو أعتق نصف رهبة أو أطعم خمسة وكسام فإنه لا يجزي. ها؟ يعني مثلا he comes someone now why why he said نصف رهبة؟ ثم الآية says رهبة. imagine that because someone might come and say طيب I will free half of you and half of you. So half and half one. But they both still slave. Okay. So that is not sufficient. 
ولو اعتق نصف عبدين لم يجزم just like the example or he fed and clothed five people that is not sufficient ولا يكفر العبد الا بالصيام the slave person his only option for kafara is fasting why He doesn't own it. Everything he owns belongs to his master. So he cannot give. He doesn't own anything. So his only option is fast. وَيُكَفِّرُ بِالصَّوْمِ مَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ مَا يُكَفِّرُ بِهِ فَاضِلًا عَنْ مَأُونَتِهِ وَمَأُونَةِ عِيَادِهِ وَخَوَائِدَيْهِ Someone got money. Some money. But this money is enough for him, for his family, and if he owes some money for his debt. Yeah. Someone got, let's say, makes $2,000 a month. Okay? His expenses and his family's expenses, and he has a loan that he pays monthly, $2,000. $2,200. Such a person moves to fasting. So just the fact you have some money doesn't necessarily mean you have to go to the feeding. Okay? So if the money you have or the income you have is enough to support your uh, basic needs and your family's needs, and if you owe some money to pay it, then the shirt said you go to the, to the fasting. Clear? ولا يلزم أن يبيع في ذلك شيئا يحتاج إليه من مسكن وخادم وأثاث وكتب وأنانية وبضاعة يختل ربحها يختل ربحها المحتاج إليه. طيب. Someone driving his car, the car takes him to work, takes him to shopping, to school, whatever. That's the only money he has. And the rest of the other money he has is for his basic, basic. We don't come to him and tell him, ah, sell your car to feed ten, if that's the only way. We don't tell him, sell furniture in your house to feed ten. We don't tell him, sell your house to feed ten. No. Whatever is basic necessity on daily basis he's using, huh? or he's eating, or he's feeding his family, we don't tell him, sell it, or compromise. These are basic needs, you continue with your basic necessities and needs. Huh? You go to fasting. وَمَنْ أَيْسَرَ بَعْدَ شُرُوعِهِ فِي الصَّمْدَ لَمْ يَفْزَمُ الْإِنْتِقَالُ عِنْدِ Who gets money after he starts fasting? Now he can't feed, doesn't have to go to. He can, but he doesn't have to. Because when it took place, he wasn't able to uh, to feed. ومن لم يجد إلا مسكينا واحدا ردد عليه عشرة أيام. Now, someone will say, والله I looked for poor people I could not find. Couldn't find only one. That's the only guy I know who's poor, who's considered مسكين. Now, a مسكين can't have a job. He will think مسكين has to be begging in the street. No. Skin can have a job, can have an income, hmm? but he is hardly making it. And the best example, all government employees in our countries, Mesaki. <laughs> yeah, I need the class, the bottom class, huh? not the. Before it gets to the deep level. Before they, they grow hair and become wolves, they all masaki. They deserve it. Understand? Just the fact he has a hat, he's, he has a job. Huh? He's a teacher. But whatever, يعني, in Egypt, for example, and the reason I know is because I'm talking with a couple of imams to, for them to come in Ramadan. He get paid 800 Egyptian a month. You know how much 800 a month? 150 dollars a month. 
He has to pay for everything from hundred fifty dollars. How? Even if it's easy. How? Can you? Can you survive with hundred fifty dollars a month in Egypt? It's not cheap. So he has to go and do outside job. Even though he's not allowed. You remember? That's your job. He has to go and teach people Quran so he can make some living. So he has a job, yet he's still miskin. So you want to tell me such a person doesn't deserve zikr? You understand? Very important. So in miskin, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah al kahf and he described the uh, Khadr, Musa, when they got into the boat. Huh? He said, The boat belongs to Masakin, work in the sea. So they work. You understand? So that's my day. Good day. Sufficient? So if you say, I can't find Masakin. Then we say, if you really can't find it and you only have one, then feed him ten different days. Okay? Feed him for ten different, ten different days. Because with ten it might sound, okay, easy to feed. Around sixty. Huh? Like the other kafara. What is this? Kafara you kafara you mean feeding ten people? Just ten people. Sure. La masaki. I can feed you. <laughs> so that is what we say. Regarding if he's Muslim or he's not, go with the Muslim. Muslim Hawla. And that is where the ulama differed about the Catholic Fitr. Huh? to the masakin and the poor should we give it, especially the zakat, zakat al man. I am. And personally, I don't give my money to a kafir. I don't give my zakat or my kafara to a kafir. There are enough Muslims who need it. Al aqrabuna, awla bil ma'roof. You want to help the kafir, you want to help the tarqiq al qulub, mu'allab yihidik al-an, mu'allab al qulub, mu'allab al qulub, mu'allab al qulub, to soften their hearts. They are Muslims. You just give them to attract them even more. Not someone who is interested in Islam. That is not Mu'allaf al Clear? So, are there different opinions? Yes, there is. Okay? But, go with the Muslims. They are more deserving, more needy. Huh? At least you know. If the food goes in, going into a halal body. If it's money given, it will be spent in a halal way. Okay. So this way we have finished the chapter of Ibn Dur. So the Holy Hala, Astaghfirullah, Alaikum wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakum wa khair, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.